Hello everyone. Today is a solo episode and I'm here to just check in on you. It's hard to believe, but we are officially halfway through the year. And I thought maybe it would be helpful if I do a little bit of a mid-year accountability check-in. If you set goals at the beginning of the year, how are you coming along with those? Have you completed them? That would be great, right? Set new ones. Abandoned them? Uh-oh. Changed them? Maybe. When was the last time you visited your goal list? Did you even set goals this year? This is what we're going to be talking about today. It is all about goals and checking in on those goals. New Year's is a popular time of year to set goals or resolutions, both personally and professionally, but those New Year's resolutions typically fade into oblivion after about six weeks. Assuming you set those goals or resolutions because you wanted to accomplish them, that is not great news, and we're well past that six-week mark in the year. But we still have a lot of year left, and we can hit the refresh button and start anew right now. So just so you're clear and you know, I'm approaching this goal topic from both a self-leadership and people leadership perspective. So you'll hear me bounce back and forth throughout this discussion because all of us have self-leadership opportunities and then those of us who also lead people, we are both a self-leader and a people leader. So think about goals from both of those perspectives today. I am very passionate about goals because I have big dreams and I know I have to take action to bring those dreams to life. Goal setting is what allows me to do that. There are a lot of benefits of setting goals, including creating new behaviors, focusing your effort and energy, which I need a lot of, and sustaining your momentum. Goals can be highly motivating, and it's one of the main things that does motivate people. Having a sense of mastery or accomplishing something is one of the main drivers of motivation for all of us. And you've probably heard it said a zillion times, but you can't manage what you don't measure, and you can't improve upon something that you don't properly manage. My recommendation is to sit down and think about what you want or need to accomplish between now and the end of the year, and then very specifically detail out how you're going to do that. I wouldn't set more than three to five goals. Remember, this is a way of focusing your energy. If you have 25 goals, that is not very focused, and your odds of accomplishing your goals are minimal. Now, there are a lot of goal-setting models out there, and I'm a big fan of using a goal-setting model. The most popular model is probably what's known as the SMART goal method. SMART is an acronym. And I think it's great to use that from a personal perspective. Side note, I actually created my own goal model that I used in my Finish It workshop, and it's called the B-STAR model, also an acronym. From a leadership perspective, a people leadership perspective, I really like the acronym FAST. FAST goals, F-A-S-T. And this concept came from an MIT Sloan Management Review article in 2018. FAST stands for Frequently Discussed, Ambitious, Specific, and Transparent. And if you're leading a team, I think it's a great model to focus on because it incorporates how you should manage the goal process for your team. There are many companies that use this FAST model, and the transparent part means each person on the team shares their goals with each other. So if you think about it, oftentimes in an organization, the leader will have purview to the individual goals of each person on the team, but they're not always shared with each other and definitely not shared across departments. Think about the impact it could have on your organization if everyone knew what everyone else was working on and striving towards total game changer and something we take for granted. We assume everyone knows that. But have you actually published your goals? Have you talked about what you're working on? And do you frequently discuss them? Really something to think about. Again, total game changer. Assuming you've already set goals, my next question to you is when was the last time you reviewed them? And how much time each week are you spending on activities that support the achievement of your goals? Whoa, let me say that again. How much time each week are you spending on activities that support the achievement of your goals? Every Monday morning, I sit down and I look at the goals I set at the beginning of this year. I rewrite each goal every week 
literally every week, rewrite each goal. And then I write down what action I've taken since the previous week to advance the goal and what I still have yet to do. And I'm not going to go into it right now, but there's actually a lot of science behind the reason why I write all of this down every week. But the next steps section is how I populate my to-do list. And then I go to the calendar and I block out time to accomplish those items. Now, I can't tell you that this all works perfectly every week, but this is the system that I have been using. And as new opportunities come my way, I look at my goals to see if the opportunity is something that will support my goals or pull me away from them. And then I make my commitments from there. We have to be careful because there's so many distractions that come into place every day, every week, that we can very easily be pulled away from the most important work of what we need to be focusing on. As a people leader, it's important to balance what you're driving towards as well as what each person on the team is driving towards. So you got to think about are there individual goals supporting the overall direction you want to go in or are they taking time, energy, and resources away from the mission, whatever that mission is for you? And when was the last time you looked at your goals and the goals for everyone on your team to ensure alignment? You have half of a year left to course correct. So perfect time to have a look at those goals and have a discussion with everyone on your team about how they're progressing with their goals. As I mentioned earlier, I run a workshop called Finish It, and it's focused on finishing goals because starting a goal is way easier than actually finishing a goal. We set goals with the best of intentions, but oftentimes life gets in the way and things change and we don't actually accomplish our goals. So if you've gotten off track with your goals, I'd encourage you to take some time to evaluate what's caused you to go off track. Perhaps you're spending too much time and energy on other things that distract you from your goal. Maybe you're not committed to your goal. Maybe you don't believe you can actually achieve it. That's what the B stands for in my B star model, believe. Do you believe you can achieve your goal? It's amazing to me how many people set goals that don't even believe they can ever achieve them. I'd say for me, the quickest derailer I've had from my goals in the past were situations where someone else put goals on me. So it was someone else's goal that they wanted me to accomplish. And it was a goal that I either didn't agree with, didn't care about, or didn't want to work on. And goals can be incredibly motivating if you're bought into them, and if you feel like they're challenging, but attainable. And in a work context, I recognize we don't always have control over our goals, but if you're in a situation where your manager is asking you to do something that you really don't agree with, don't care about, or don't want to work on, I would recommend you muster up the courage to have a conversation about that. And I'm assuming you have a relationship with your manager where you can have that conversation. If you don't, We have a bigger problem to address. But for the purposes of this conversation, I'm going to assume that you have a a relationship where you can say something. People leaders, if you have individuals on your team that are big time procrastinating on a goal or two, I'd advise that you get curious about the why. This is a great coaching opportunity. You could ask questions like, hey, now that we're halfway through the year, I wanted to do a quick check-in with you on your goals. Tell me how you're feeling about the progress that you've made on each of these goals we set at the beginning of this year. Where are you coming up against blockers? What might get in the way of you achieving these goals? Which of these goals are most motivating to you? Which ones aren't and how come? What can I do to support you in achieving these goals? And notice how different of a conversation that is from, I wanted to talk to you about your goals. I noticed you haven't accomplished X, Y, and Z. And that needs to get done by October 1st or we're going to have a real problem and a different conversation. Totally different tone. One is a conversation in a two-way dialogue where you're curious and you're learning and you're collaborating. The other one, not so much. The last thing I'll say about goals is to consider whether your goals are playing to your strengths. If you listen to my episode on Clifton Strengths, you'll know the power that strengths play in both engagement and productivity. Think about are the goals you or you and your manager set playing to your strengths? 
pull out that strengths profile if you've taken one, look at your top five to 10 talent themes and think about how you can better leverage your strengths to accomplish your goals. Whether you're in a position of self-leadership and or people leadership, use this halfway point in the year to check your progress on your goals. Course correct if you must, but don't abandon ship. You still have plenty of time to accomplish everything you set out to do this year. So get out there, get it done, and get across the finish line with your goals. 